We also need to mention miracles, because this fits underneath here, this question on evil. We talked about providence yesterday, important idea, that God does indeed care for his creation, and it's an ongoing thing. And miracles, it's worth discussing this just a little bit before we leave this chapter and move on. Um, what makes a miracle a miracle? What is a miracle? It's out of the ordinary. Yeah, it would be something um, God is apparently setting aside the um, usual working orders or rules of um, his creation and intervening in a direct way. And um, so I think that's what we use what we think by, of mir- by miracle. And I would go with that definition. I'm not that impressed with the kind of wide definition that calls just about everything that happens a miracle. You know, Fair enough. I mean, there's a side to that. But a miracle really is when God's intervening and setting aside the usual operating order of his creation to accomplish his special purpose for some reason. Now, uh, having said that, though, it's also true that um, there are uh, ways that God intervenes that might be truly miraculous, and there are ways that God intervenes. He's just using what's there. And either way, it's still God who does it, and we shouldn't minimize that. Because that's why providence and miracles go really closely together. Because providence means God's caring for his creation. So a person is diagnosed with some serious illness, and the doctor says, we have a treatment we can do for this thing, and um, chances are very good that it'll work. So they start the treatment program, and the guy is healed. So who gets the credit? Why? Yeah, God has made the materials available. He's given the wisdom. He's directed the um, the doctors. He still gets the credit. Because he works through means doesn't lessen his hand any. So God accomplishes his purpose, his purpose of providing and caring for and protecting his creation, even through means, which does not diminish in the least the reality that it's still God doing it. So I, kind of what I'm driving at here is we don't need to maybe get so hung up on, you know, was it a miracle? Wasn't it? Does this qualify as a miracle? God's doing it. And if God wants to intervene directly, fine. If God works through means, fine. Either way, his purpose is getting accomplished. It really doesn't matter. We're, we're recognizing God's hand in it, and we're giving him the credit for what's happening and, and for his work in these things. All right? Good. Okay. <clears throat> Next chapter takes up the topic of sin. And so that's what we're going to be dealing with here is dealing with the question of sin. When Adam and Eve were in the garden before the fall, were they justified before God? They didn't need to be, yeah. Well, were they righteous before God? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So justified and righteous really uh, function as synonyms as far as I'm concerned. They work pretty much the same thing. So they were indeed righteous before God. Why? Because they were without without sin. Because they were without sin and they were perfect. So what you're saying then is that they were righteous before God because they were doing the right stuff. Is that right? They were not they doing were the wrong stuff. Right. <laughs> what? They were created that way. They were created that way. So because God created them good, that's why they were righteous, because they were doing good stuff, because they were created that way. So God gets a credit, but they were doing good stuff, and that's what made them righteous. Well, they didn't know the difference between good and evil. So they True didn't know enough. They were doing good or not. What's that? They didn't know whether what they were doing yeah. was good or whether okay. it was Okay. All right. So what made them righteous then? Obedience. So they were being obedient, and in their obedience, they were righteous. They were fulfilling God's purpose. They were fulfilling God's purpose for them. So they were doing the right stuff, having dominion over the creation. And because they were doing the right stuff, they were they were righteous before God. But doesn't it also have to do with not doing the wrong stuff? Okay, so they were avoiding the wrong stuff. They were not eating from the tree that they were told not to eat from, and they were behaving themselves, and they weren't sinning. And so because of their their, well performance, they were righteous before God. No, it's God's hand in it. That's why they're righteous. God's hand in it. So, Because, well, yeah, God made them that way, so God gets the credit. But they're still doing the right stuff, and that's what makes them righteous, right? No. Do, they, do the right stuff in response? It has nothing to do with performance. Yeah, it has nothing to do with performance. Well, you know that. So why, why are Adam and Eve righteous then? Because they 
relationships with God, not that there's there anything they're doing. Right relationship with God. They're in a right relationship with God. Why are they in a right relationship with God? They're in the image of God. What's that? They're made from okay, God. they're made in the image of God. True. We'll ask God when we get there. <laughs> That's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to wait. <laughs> Here's what I'm trying to drive at. 